I'm going to introduce to you one of your real friends in a few minutes. Before I introduce him, I want to have just a word to say myself, and I'll make it snappy and brief. That is in regard to the men who are going home. Now, here is how I feel about it, and I want you all to know how I feel about those men who are going home. I am not advising anybody to go home. On the other hand, I am not opposing anyone going home who feels that they should go home, who feel that they have something constructive they can accomplish by going home. We intend to maintain our army in Washington regardless of who goes home. But I do want the fellows who are going home to understand me before they go. An outstanding man himself who has come here at my special invitation to talk to you. He's going to tell you what he thinks of us, what he thinks of the BEF, what he thinks of the movement we have started, and all about it. Comrades, I want you to know that this gentleman who is going, comrade, gentleman and comrade, who is going to talk to you is the only man ever who has ever been presented with two Congressional Medals of Honor. <laughs> he is also the only man who ever ran for office in the United States of America on the bonus ticket. <laughs> As I said before, he's a real soldier, a real man, a real gentleman, and a real comrade. I take pleasure in introducing to you Major General Smedley Butler, uh, retired of the U.S. Marine Corps. <laughs> Fellow soldiers, everywhere I go, I have to correct the statements that are always made about my being the only man who ever got two medals of honor. That's not right. There are a lot of others. There are three others. There are four of us have gotten them, and three of them were Marines. <laughs> the other, the other, the other, yeah, we'll, I'll answer that in a minute. I'll, <laughs> I want to tell you, I want to tell you why I'm here. Now, for 35 years, I've been a soldier. A Marine, that same thing. Yeah, I'll tell you why it is. Why everybody who's ever worn a uniform is the same. I'll tell you a story to illustrate it. The tenderfoot was riding along on a, on a stagecoach, and the driver had a long whip, and he was very expert the way he handled it. Went down the road, saw a horse fly sitting on a cow's back. And he hit the horse fly, killed it with a whip. The fly, the uh, cow never even moved, didn't know he'd done it. They went along a little further and saw a grasshopper sitting on a, on a fence rail. And he reached over and killed the grasshopper. Didn't even hit the fence. A little bit Farther down the line, he came to a hornet's nest hanging down. One hornet hanging out of the bottom of the nest. He didn't hit that. And <laughs> when, he, when he'd gone by, the tenderfoot said to him, say, say, what's the matter with you? You hit the horse fly and you hit the grasshopper. Why didn't you hit the hornet? Ah, oh, the driver said, look here, young fella. A grasshopper's a grasshopper, and a horsefly's a horsefly, but a hornet's a whole damned organization. <laughs> now, if you fellas get that in your house, I brain. George Washington's army went home in the fall of the Winter Valley Forge, but by God, they came back the next spring and chewed up the enemy. 
You. Listen. Those of you who go home, you ought to keep somebody here as, as a, a front line trench. See? As somebody. Yeah, God, you have just as much right to have a lobby here as any steel corporation. Yeah. <laughs> Don't make any mistake about it. You've got the sympathy of the American people. Now, don't you lose it. Yeah. Yeah. Remember this. Remember this. It's been worth it. <laughs> the other day when your commander came up to come, you got some fella as a, as a boss here. Yeah. Let me tell you that. He's got the, he's, he appealed to me the second I saw him with that. He's got the, oh, I have a fellow who does things. And uh, if he had asked me to come out here bare, oh, without any clothing on, I'd have come anything that fellow asked me to do, I'd do. Uh, temptation to come down to be with you. Just want to be in the same atmosphere. Look, makes me so damn mad a whole lot of people speak of you as tramps. By God, they didn't speak of you as tramps in 1917 and 18. No. Uh, let me tell you, let me tell you something. I've been all over the world. I've seen you fellas on the streets in Washington. There isn't this well-behaved group of citizens in the world that's sitting right in this camp. I've, I've had to run soldiers. I never saw such discipline. I never saw such fine Americanism as is exhibited by you people. And it's an honor, a privilege to come here and be with you. I mean just what I say. I don't want anything. Nobody can kick me anymore. And I'll say what I say. <laughs> Any kind that's occurred in the history of our country. Now, you. You fellas are so close to the woods that you can't see the trees, remember? <laughs> Take it from me. This is the greatest demonstration of Americanism we have ever had. Pure Americanism. Willing to take this beating as you've taken it. Stand right steady. You keep every law. And why in the hell shouldn't you? Who in the hell has done all the bleeding for this country and for this law and and this Constitution anyhow, but you fellas. I know, I know. I had a, a rotten old mud hole of a camp in France where two million of you went through. Now, I know. I know who's made this country worth living in. It's just you fellas. You're a little bit older than you, are, than you were the last time I saw you, but you're the same the same delicious, lovable type. Now, you hang to it. Don't you break any laws. Don't you allow them to do one thing, you see, that allow all of our friends all over America to say this crowd is upsetting our institution. Remember, we've got a God-given form of government, and whether it's run right or not depends on the people who do the voting. Now, you get out. Those of you go home, those of you who stay here, you send out the word back from the front. What do you see? What's going on? But don't, don't take a step backward. Remember, as soon as you haul down your camp flag here and clear out this thing, every one of you clears out, this evaporates in thin air. And all this struggle will have been no good. Hang on to it. Look, I'll tell you a little story. And we'll quit. <laughs> have I talked on all night? I couldn't. I couldn't get enough of it, but you will. Look, it's my guess that when people like you, remember, by God, you made this country worth living in, and don't allow anybody to tell you differently. If it hadn't been for the American soldiers, land here wouldn't have been. Remember this? Remember the you go home when you exercise your right of citizen, which is voting. Remember this, that everybody who's not with you is against you. There's no such thing as a middle court. 
If anybody's with you, he'll say so. And if he doesn't say anything, he's against you. And when you go to the polls, lick hell out of him. That's what I'm doing. Make any, make any difference what he is. This is not a business of party. This is a business of the people. It isn't a question of whether it's right for you to have the bonus or not. Things don't go that way. It doesn't go by justice. It goes by votes. And if you want your bonus, you get the vote. And you can have ten times the bonus you get the vote. Oh, you're...